Okay, welcome to this week's episode of Low Subbin. And we know that many people are picking up their brand new RVs. And we've got 22 years of experience and we're gonna use every one of those years to help show you exactly how you can make that first trip stress-free and useful to get the most out of that RV. So let's go to it. Okay, so what exactly is a shakedown trip? Your shakedown trip is your first trip that you take after you purchase your Airstream to test all the systems. Yeah, and the worst thing you can do is to sit there and say, buy your Airstream on the East Coast and go, woohoo, let's go to Yellowstone. Exactly. And so this trip is what it will teach you how to use each of your systems. And if you have questions, you can call the dealership and you'll learn what gear you need. So there are three parts to a shakedown trip. There's what you do before the trip, mm -hmm. there's towing to your site, and there's being at your site and testing your systems. And after all that, you would probably want to do a debrief and talk about what you need to do differently. All right, so let's go ahead and go through those separate steps yep. and get into a virtual shakedown. So before you even pick up your Airstream, it's so tempting to buy those things for your trip, like barbecues and chairs and the solo stove, but... We're going to give you the top 10 things you need to make your shakedown trip a, a success. success. Number one, tow mirrors. If your tow vehicle comes with the super heavy duty style tow mirrors, that's a bonus. But if you don't have these super heavy duty style tow mirrors, make sure you purchase some slip on or clip on tow mirrors because being able to see is an important safety tip for towing. Number two, a tire pressure monitoring system. We like the TST 507. Number three concerns tire safety and a torque wrench. Trailer tires aren't like truck tires. And when you buy an Airstream or you change a tire, you should retorque the lugs every 25, 50, and 100 miles. Number four involves your fresh water setup, a water filter and a water hose. We particularly like this blue water hose from Air Gear, which is 50 feet long, and we've been using it happily for five years. So number five is to protect your rig from sometimes squiffy campground electricity, and you do that with an electronic management system. We use the Hughes system, but there's also the Progressive Industries, and both of which are quality systems. Your Airstream probably came with 25 feet of cord. Check to make sure it did. But in addition, you'll need 50 feet of extension cord sized to the amperage of your rig. This is a 30 amp because we're a 30 amp rig. If you're a 50 amp rig, make sure you get that 50 amp extension cord for a total of 50 feet. So number six is leveling blocks for your rig. We use these Lego blocks, which we like. And also it's important to have a level for your fridge inside. I think a lot of people use the Anderson leveling blocks, which are those little curvy swoopy things. They didn't exist when we bought ours 22 years ago, yep. so we're still using the old core ones. We are very old. Both fashion. will work well. Item number seven are your wheel chocks, and this is one of the first things you'll put on when you're unhitching your rig. We prefer the heavy rubber ones with the cord so that they can be pulled out and removed if they get stuck in there, um, but you can use the cheaper plastic ones. We like the heavy duty rubber ones. They can be bought anywhere from Harbor Freight, etc. Okay, item number eight is a basic toolkit. You'll need things like screwdrivers, pliers, a hammer, of course, WD-40, duct tape, all kind of organized. And as a bonus, if you're really good, an electrical multimeter to troubleshoot any electrical problems you might have on your shakedown trip. Number nine is your stinky slinky. You'll need 10 foot lengths, two of them, to connect to your sewer so that you can test the sewer system and how to learn it. And also, make sure you have gloves, these nitrile gloves. There is nothing more disgusting than checking out a sewer system or dumping your tanks without the gloves. And also, don't forget your chemical. Yeah, you're gonna need sewer chemical. There's the TST stuff that's available at Walmart. We use the clean tank system. There's Happy Camper. There's a variety of different things that you can use. Just make sure you have that sewer chemical once you dump your tanks. So item number 10 is a fridge thermometer. You don't have to go as elaborate as this one from Thermoworks, but a standard little $10, $5 fridge thermometer will tell you if your fridge is cooling properly and it's good for food safety. All right, here's item number 10A or 11 or bonus, whatever you want to think about, but it is your checklist, especially as a newbie, but we still use them 22 years later. You should have your RV checklist custom designed to your rig. You can get this from Love Oven, but whatever you do, Follow that checklist, it'll make sure you're safe and you don't miss any items that you might regret. 
before you pick up your Airstream, it's important to pick out your shakedown campsite. And this campsite ideally should be close to the dealership. It should have full hookups, electric, water, and sewer. That way you can test all your systems. Yes, and it's nice to have a level surface. Gravel is good, pavement's better. So, and the pull through makes it easy for you to pull in on your first trip. Also consider making it during the hours that your dealership is open so that if you have any questions, you can get some answers. Yeah, the worst thing would be to be to book it for a Sunday and you have all these error codes and blah, 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 and you can't figure it out because the dealer is closed. Yes. And another tip with regards to picking out your campground, you know, it might be a good idea the day before to go ahead and do a little bit of a recon. That way you're not surprised by a difficult pull through or a very unlevel site. I'm sure the campground, if you just say, hey, I'm buying my first RV, I'd like to check out my site, they'd be more than happy to let you in, check it out, and that'll ease some of the anxiety and reduce the stress for that first hookup and campground. And also do not arrive after dark. <laughs> yeah, do not arrive after dark. A shakedown cruise is all about reducing stress and learning your rig. So make sure you show up at the dealership to pick up your rig with a full tank of gas so that you don't have to worry about filling up on the way. Before you leave the dealership, it is very important to have that dealer walk through. This is your time to go through with the salesperson to turn on every device, open every drawer, look over every space to make sure things are perfect and you understand the systems. And if it's a more complicated system, make sure you take notes and also use your phone video application to record some video of it. Make sure you have your manual. You know where your manual and all your product support literature is so that if you do have an issue or problems, you can go ahead and check those things out. And make sure you know how to hook up your electric, turn on your propane, and actually dump your sewer as well. And don't forget that awning. So we're towing away from the dealership. What are your thoughts as to what we should look for or do? So one of the things you should do is make sure safety is your priority. And that means torquing your lug nuts on your trailer at 25, 50, and 100 mile intervals. Don't rely on the dealership having done that. So um, pull over, find a safe place, a parking lot or something off the highway, and go ahead and torque those lug nuts. Trailer lug nuts are not like trucks. Because of the forces involved in the closed tires, you've got to torque those nuts. So definitely do that as a priority for what you're doing. So that's priority number one. Number two, keep your speed down. Let everybody else pass you. There's no reason to be doing more if you're on the highway than 58 to 62 miles an hour. This avoids you having to judge mirrors and distances and passing and all that other stuff. Let other people pass you, especially for those first few miles that you're towing. So keep your speed consistent so people can plan and be around you. Yes. Also have the anticipation that people are going to pull out in front of you if you're on a back road. Correct. So think that's going to happen and plan for it. And also just watch for people who do not know how to get onto the interstate. Yes. Also make sure your brake controller is set. Uh, ask the dealer what your brake controller should be set at to begin with and then you can test it and you can determine how it feels for yourself say on a dirt road or in a campground but your dealer should give you a good idea as to where to initially set your brake controller so that you get some good brakes and can stop if needed that sounds good so one of the most important things when taking right hand turns is to keep one eye on the road and one eye on the mirror on your right side mirror yes because one of the most frequent causes of tire explosions are people hitting curbs and you do that when taking those tight right turns and you do damage to the sidewall of the tire and sometimes that's not apparent for many years to come so it's not like you're going to hit a curb and blow your tire out later on in the day you could hit a curb and blow your tire out one to two years later as a result of the damage inflicted so always have one eye on the mirror one eye up front when, especially when taking those right hand curves and make those turns wider Exactly, and even when taking those left-hand turns, say coming out of a dump station or other tight spaces, always keep an eye on that mirror to make sure your trailer never hits a curb. Once you reach your campsite, stop, get out of the vehicle, and look to see where you would like to place your RV. Make sure you look up, and don't be rushed. If somebody's behind you, trust me, they had to learn how to back in once before, and they will be patient. 
Do not rush yourself just because somebody's behind you. And just pull through slowly and just watch where your hookups are and sort of align yourself with your hookups. And when you're backing up, always, always, always use a spotter with either a radio or a cell phone. Or if you don't have a spotter, just get out and look every so often to make sure you're on track. I think the term is goal. Get out and look. Remember that if you're a solo traveler. Very good. So once you are backed in or pulled in, just start hooking up your systems according to your checklist. Make sure everything's hooked up, and then it's the fun part about starting to get everything running, aside from the dealership, on your own, get those systems functioning. And last thing is just have fun and enjoy the relax exactly relax and enjoy it it might be a bit of a learning curve but it's absolutely worth it for you to enjoy your airstream in the future on your fabulous trip that you have planned hopefully you've taken notes in your book or on your computer or phone of all your we call it a glitch list or a punch list of all those things that you want to either improve next trip need to fix or whatever we always encourage you to fix your own stuff and get to know your airstream all the better. And don't forget their checklists because the checklists are gonna be very helpful down the road. All right, well, there you have it. Our tips and tricks for getting your first trip out as being stress-free as possible. So if like this video. Give us a big thumbs up. And if you think we were in a subscription, click the subscribe. And comment below if you have any tips or tricks for making your first trip with your RV a success. Because we come out with RV and Airstream related videos just like this one every Tuesday. Thanks for watching.